All right, today we're going to go ahead and be trying to work on my 1940s era Ford 9-inch tractor. I'm going to actually rebuild this engine here. This thing's really, it's so worn out. The, I don't even think one of the cylinders is firing. The thing burns a lot of oil, plugs foul up so easily, and you know, I could definitely use a freshening up. Now, one of the weird things about this one is I've got a 9-in, nine, 2-in nine rear end. But the front end actually has the 8-in engine, as you can tell by that marking right there. So it'll be a little bit different parts-wise, but the engines, of course, obviously, they look like they bolt pretty much right up. That's just the way the tractor was when I got it, but you got to be kind of cautious with the parts. Now, Ford did have a couple of different engines for the 8-ins. Well, sorry, not different engines, but different distributor styles. So, right, I have a front-mounted distributor, which is... For the early model 8 ins and for the 9 and 2 ins and the later model 8 ins had a side mounted distributor which is a bit different but that was only towards the end but luckily i think for simplicity's sake i like the front mounted distributors because that's the way it is but i've got a, already got an aftermarket exhaust manifold on here and it was a pain to put on so i want to avoid taking it off if i can but but what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to tear into this thing. So I'm going to take off this hood here first. There's a few bolts around the top. There's four back here uh, the holding it on. And then I've got, uh, ideally there should be another four down here at the bottom. But it looks like I only have a couple on this side. But we'll go ahead and yank that off. And then i got to pull off the fuel line, which is right over here. And yeah, take on, undo that bolt. Yeah, I'll probably undo the uh, fitting right down here. That way I can keep the fuel tank connected to the rest of it. Go ahead and get to that roof. Right, so I'm going to go with, went ahead and pull off four bolts up top here. And the bolts that were holding it down on the bottom. Actually, I can show you those real quick. They're just right over here. They hold on kind of these dog ears. These dog legs over here down the bottom. Went ahead and took off the radiator cap so I can get the hood off. Now, one of the things to help make it easier to take these off is actually take off the steering wheel. It's pretty much darn near impossible to get off that hood if you don't take off the steering wheel. So it's just there's one bolt here and that one nut on the steering wheel. In an ideal world, it'll pop right off. But it's like, I'm going to need a hammer on mine a little bit. But I've actually I've restored a Ford dine in before. So this is not the first time that I've gone into an engine, not the first time I've pulled it apart. Unfortunately, you, you know, I'm sure you know how, I don't know if you've done a restoration before or not, but usually there's a lot going on with them and a lot of things go wrong. So, uh, But I unfortunately probably have a little bit too much experience with taking this stuff apart, but I wouldn't consider myself an expert by any means. Uh, so get the yank the steering wheel off, and I still got to pull off that fuel line, and then the next thing we'll do is actually pull the hood itself off. All right, got the hood off of the tractor. You definitely see it looks a lot more bare bones now. And one of the nice things about these old Fords is that whenever you actually pull off the hood, you can basically have access to pretty much unlimited access to really everything. And you can really see just how simple it is. Now, one of the other things that I'm doing here, it's not necessary by any means, but I'm actually taking my bolts here and I'm actually putting them back in the holes. And that's what I did over here for the lower ones to hold on the dog ears and it really just because you know i'm literally a shade tree mechanic here and i don't want to lose these bolts in the ground because it's a pain to find them on the ground over here so i'm going to go ahead and put these bolts back in next thing i'm going to do is probably disconnect this battery start draining the water out of the radiator but i'm going to put these bolts in and I'll get... all right so to drain the radiator is actually pretty easy there should be just a little plug or a plug or a, some sort of valve I'm opening mine up here quick i'm just going to drain it into a bucket it's just plain old water but I, and I don't really want to get the whole ground wet. And disconnect the battery, of course, please just make sure you disconnect the ground first. These Ford six, if they're originally six, they're originally six volt. And of course they come with the standard six volt positive ground. And to give you guys an idea as to how jerry-rigged this thing really is, I literally have a bungee cord holding this thing down. You see how the battery's just loose. And, well, there's the bungee cord. <laughs> but it works for now. So the next thing that we'll probably do in, uh, shoot, we'll go ahead and pull the radiator hoses off and get that radiator off so we can get access to the front end. So while that radiator is draining, I'm going to go ahead and pull the air intake and the exhaust off. Air intake is really simple. If you've got the, it usually has these little clips or something, and you just got to 
going to unscrew these, loosen them up a little bit enough that you can slide off the intake hose. Now mine's a bit seized up, but hopefully I can get it after a while. And the carburetor, see one of the goofy things about these aftermarket exhaust manifolds is that they kind of lower the position of the carburetor. And it's kind of a pain if you're trying to run the exact, the original intake uh, line as I am here. And it just, it makes it kind of a pain. So later on down the road, I might actually lengthen this so it's a little easier to deal with. But for now, especially since I'm disassembling it, I really don't care too much. So I'll go ahead and get this taken off. Okay, disconnecting this here. I'm going to break through this line to the generator. 3 8 inch wrench and a 3 8 inch drive. Just like that. Now my generator here actually doesn't work. So this literally is just to hold wiring, the wiring harness in place. And you can see just how loose and shot that is. This thing definitely doesn't charge. Something to perhaps tackle a little later on down the road. Next thing, go ahead and loosen the ignition wire here. I believe that one's a little smaller, 11 30 seconds. Now over the years, I'm sure a lot of things have actually changed. But so if you're working on your tractor, they're probably not going to be exactly the same. But that just kind of depends. So pretty much just eyeball it. Loosening the ignition wire. Just 11 30 seconds right here. Radiator is about done. We're going to about pull out those radiator hoses and get that radiator yanked off. Okay, there's a couple bolts down here at the bottom holding on the radiator. Mine here, I decided to use 916 size and just loosen those two bolts up. Went ahead and loosened up these radiator clamps or hoses so we can just yank those suckers off to the upper. You get some water coming out of there and we'll get that lower off too. And yeah, well, if it doesn't come off right there from the water pump, we always yank it off from the radiator itself. Also, got to run the water from the block here. It's just a little plug on the left hand side of you here. You got to undo that one. It looks like the block here for some reason. I guess it's pretty dry. But, yeah, I guess it is dry. But, left hand side, just right next to the oil filter behind the starter, that plug right there is what you use during the block. Alright, so with those bolts and with these hoses loose, this radiator here, it's really loose. Just loosen it right off here. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is pull off this fan right here. It's just these four bolts all around it. And mine are, a couple of them are really stuck, kind of rusted, so it's going to be a little fun. But get those suckers out real quick and then pull that fan off. Alright, next up here, we're going to pull off this ignition coil. Okay, it's not too hard. Now, I'm not too concerned about the spark plug wires. They're not, they're pretty darn easy to put back on. So, I'll just go ahead and pull them off. I'll show you guys later on down the road. Uh, whenever we go to actually assemble this thing, really how easy it is to identify them. But pull this clip off, and then you can pull off that ignition coil. Just don't lose the gasket. Mine's reusable. If yours isn't, just make sure you get a new one. Now, I, don't, I think I'll probably leave the actual uh, distributor on here for now. But I guess, well, I guess I'd probably leave the ignition coil on then as well. But um, I will uh, go ahead and put that on there just to keep dust and dirt out of it. All right, next we go ahead. I got a 11 16th wrench and I'm going to pull off. There's a couple bolts here that'll hold on this spark plug holder. And then we got one more bolt here that'll hold on this kind of throttle assembly here. So I'm going to go ahead and yank that off and help open up the engine. Now, some of mine are actually though. This one, of course, you see it's not connected, kind of rusted through. Hopefully yours will be. Uh, that's something definitely need to work on. Mine actually, I have three quarter stud right there, three quarter inch, just because you know this thing's been through a few times and it's uh, <laughs> a few of the holes have kind of the threads have been messed up so much that we had to go to a hot, bigger size. Go and yank these suckers off here. All right, so that the assembly here just pulled it off. I can just set it off to the side. Now, if you get cattle like I've got, I'm gonna probably take these off even more just to make sure that they don't chew it up. But otherwise, they'll probably be fine. Okay, now this other end of the throttle pulls right out of here. I, and then I gotta re disconnect this joint here real quick. Actually, heck, why even bother? I can probably just set this off to the side right over here. Eh, something like that. There it falls off. Okay, of course. So I'll set that with the other parts. And then now we're starting to really see the engine. Now, one of the things I'm gonna go ahead, these are torqued down these head bolts at least should be torqued down now it's not the end of the world if you pull them off unevenly like i just did as long as you don't run it <laughs> then uh, you don't risk blowing a head gasket i mean these things are such low compression anyways i don't think it really matters too much 
but I'm going to go ahead and at least put some pressure back on these just to help even things up because I'll eventually, of course, take these off later. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my exhaust over here. Looks like they're a, let's see, actually they might be, how can, nope, wait, 9 16 inch. 9 16 inches right here, two bolts pull those off, and yank the exhaust out over there and we'll have that part disconnected. Alright, so I just yanked off my exhaust, even has an idea as to how worn out my engine is, how much oil is producing. The inside of this should hopefully just be carbon buildup, but, well, my hands for instance. Uh, that's actually oil that I was getting off of it for probably not not so good looks like I actually got a lot a lot of it off but there was definitely some oil coming out of there it doesn't surprise me this thing puts out so much oil it just billows out of there like crazy all right so anyways the next thing here we could probably disconnect this here choke cable here real quick uh, I actually jerry rigged and wired mine on there <laughs> the aftermarket exhaust manifold doesn't work very well so I had to kind of mock up my own to get it to work and then we can also disconnect the cable over here or the hose over here uh, to before the oil pressure sensor and then we'll end up needing to take off oh we'll need to take off these front end components but we'll, we'll get to that here in a minute okay so got the truck cable off and I got the line here to this connector next thing go ahead and do is pull off this generator now normally they have kind of a spring mechanism that holds them on and kind of like a Oh, kind of like a band that goes around here too, but mine's a little bit more uh, goofy than that. I actually have just two bolts here. I have no idea. It looks like it might be a 9 16 there and probably even at three quarters that I'll just take out. But there's this main one down here that you'll have regardless. This is kind of the one that it pivots on, and you'll need to loosen that up anyways to tension or take tension off the belt. Also got over here too, disconnect the starter wire. You don't want to forget that, otherwise you'll be trying to pull the engine apart and you'll have the wire still stuck to it. Bad thing. Make sure to take it off. Okay, so I figured my engine was pretty worn out, but to give you a really good idea, look at how dirty the spark plug is. Actually, just take a look at it, see if I can get the camera to focus. You can actually see there's literally oil on it. There you go. And you see it's all shiny and everything. That is oil, and that's number one cylinder. And looks like this is number two here. They're both kind of oily. The other one's got a little oil on them too, but uh, it really shows you just how worn out this engine is.